get it on. Get it on. You should always have a chip while you on the throne. On your throne. Nobody cares, you better stay alive. Yeah. But for now, we up to bat, we yelling, hit or die. Hit or die, 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 hit or die. Hit or die. That's two for me, one for the team, one for the team. and we won't stop till we get the ring. Hit or die, 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 hit or die. That's two for me, one for the team, and we won't stop. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hit or Die podcast. Round two, my friend. <laughs> Round two, man. One on one. Plus my mini. P- plus your, your, your mini man here. Yeah, so this is Cash Boss Walden right here. So this is my, my one and only boy. I got three girls at home. <laughs> and so my boy rides with me. And Mama says I can I can come and do a podcast if I bring my son with me. So well, we're, we're hey, like I said, this is a family friendly <laughs> show. Other than some of the bad words, which we'll try to keep to a minimum. Huh. All right, big guy, that'll be good for you, buddy. For those of you listening, you, you're gonna hear a lot of little man, my, yeah. little man in the background, <laughs> little grunts here and there. Uh, please <laughs> check out the merch site we just posted. It's been up for a while, but we haven't really shared it. Uh, it's on Teespring.com. Again, there's some T-shirts, hoodies, some other stuff on there. Uh, and use the link tree uh, link if you need it. Also, go follow on Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast, on Instagram at Hit or Die. And here on YouTube, please subscribe and share and give us a follow on those as well. Marcus, my boy. Now, you had a, another one before we left or yes, before we, you took off. Right before I took off. We, uh, How's that going? Very good. Very good. So far, well, Mama's, been Mama's been holding doing, it down. Mama's been holding it down. You're I a left. lucky man, bud. Yeah, April 6th, we had her. Beckett Capri Walden. And so now she's a little over a month. I was glad to be home and be able to come and see them for a couple of days before I head back out tomorrow morning. Short trip. Short trip, man. It was three full days, which was well worth it. Coming from the East Coast, it was worth to travel the seven hours and, and get my get my three full days while I'm here. Two halves and a full and three fulls is is well worth it. Sometimes FaceTime is just not enough. No, nah, not especially with the little, little ones, because I know with Sutton I missed the first month, three months really fast. I was in Venezuela playing. Um, and then I went straight to season with the twins in 2016. And not, so I missed, she was four months before I ever held her, held her. I left three days after I was only home for about seven days of the first four months. <sighs> I don't know if I could do that. And then, so she came to visit me for a week and I didn't see her for another probably two and a half months. So I saw her for 15 days of probably the first six, seven months. So that's why now I'm able to come home and see the kids, man. I'll take it every chance I get. Hey, you got to, uh, so in the Atlantic league, Yep. How's everything going so far? Going good, man. We Great group of guys. I'm in uh, Gastonia, which is just on the west side of Charlotte. Um, okay. Gastonia Honey Hunters is a team. Um, it's the south division of the Atlantic League. It used to only be up in the northeast where I was in 2015 in Lancaster, uh, PA. And now they're in the south. I like the south. It's so much. It's warmer. I've been out there trying to get some sun rays. And it's been 75, 85 degrees. We went up north right before I flew home. It was 42, two rainouts. They just had two rainouts again as I flew home. The The Northeast is not very – it's not baseball friendly, April and May. Uh, you've, you've I've been there a had lot. your time there also. <laughs> uh, so, to listen, do they – is it the same kind of schedule rolled out in that in the Atlantic as far as the playing exa- games? The exact same schedule as minor league baseball. Um, okay. It is pretty much – I would call it like two and a half A. There's quite a few guys – more guys have double A experience than – guys with only a ball experience or less um i'd say there's 250 guys in the league 265 whatever there is i mean i'm thinking there's probably 45 50 big leaguers and probably 200 of them have played double a baseball so i mean it's i saw 2.5 a yeah you know it's, a lot. it's better than 2a i would assume but it's a lot of older guys um so it's it's pretty com- it is very competitive you got to go out there and you got to you got to you know you got to go get it but uh it is definitely a different league but schedule wise, it is the exact same. We get every Monday off, um, three game sets, three game sets. Come home, get Monday off, and I think we're, I think it's one forty. They go all the way till the end of September, so we start a little bit later. But that's it. So, and then the roster size. We started at twenty eight. I think we're at twenty six or twenty five now. I'm not even sure. I'm one of the starters. I'm one of five. That's all. How's I that been? Awesome, man. Yeah, you liking it? I, I mean, I've always liked the lifestyle of being a starter, the routines, you know, being able to work out on your days. And but now, pitching and knowing that I got, I go out there and I got to go seventy to 85, 90 pitches. It's a little different. I haven't done it in seven years. 
but I went out there. I didn't do it. I didn't have a spring training. I had no spring training this year because we were having Beckett. So I went out there and my first one, I went 45 pitches and three, 42 pitches and three. Next one went five innings and 54. And I was like, all right, I'm kind of tired after five, but went out there. And my last one, I ended up throwing 72 and six, 72 pitches and six innings, 58 strikes. Just trying to go out there and pound the zone and, and keep the ball in the ballpark. Do you, uh, your routine, like as far as after a start, change them from when you were leaving? Definitely. Like but uh, now, the maintenance is obviously probably a little more. Maintenance is different. Um, it's kind of, I'm kind of taking it in between of what I did when I was rehabbing, or not rehab, when I was a reliever, and then what I did as a starter. So I'm able to start now, but be able to take it like a reliever mentality to where it's one pitch at a time. I'm not trying to go out there and give 75 pitches right away out the out the shoot. One pitch at a time, get through the first, boom. Get through the first, try to go out there for the second and kind of keep it rolling that way. As uh, It was a lot different when I was younger. I was, I was always worried about trying to go my five innings and I'd have really bad first innings. I was notorious for having terrible first. I remember facing 2012, I'm coming up, I'm facing Billy Hamilton leading off, and he's the fastest guy in the league. Yeah, Four pitches, ball four. By the fifth pitch, he's on third base. He's still second wild pitch. He's on third and five pitches into this game. Six pitch, Torres, who been been all over the big leagues, um, little second baseman, Torres. Uh, I can't think of his name, first name. Um, great scrappy hitter. He's hitting 300 in a lot of different places. And he'd go out there, six pitch, ground ball, a shortstop, one out, one run, down one zero. And it's like, that was I was notorious for that when I was starting. So once I got to the bullpen, I really had to hone in getting the first guy. First strike, first guy, keep going. And outside of that, it's really helped me be a, be a starter and go out there and, and just try to dominate the first hitter every single inning. How much preparation do you do, too? So preparation-wise, I mean, it depends on what you're – all right, so the big league preparation is all about scouting the hitters. It's knowing exactly – you know who you're facing. Like, we, we've kind of talked about it previously – I had pockets of hitters that I was going to face. Um, depending, like, let's say with the Yankees, like, I knew I was going to face Judge. Like, my stuff just matched up against his swing better than a lot of other guys in our bullpen. Now, that doesn't mean I was throwing the ninth, but it did. I mean, I had some big games in the fifth inning with bases loaded, one out, two outs, and I liked those situations personally. Your first end of the game, there's not a whole lot of time to let the – I wasn't worried about going and closing a game. Like, there wasn't that mentality of, like, oh, this build up, this build up, this build up. Now, as a reliever, it was just, all right, you got these four guys, go get them. In the Atlantic League, I kind of, I mean, I'm doing spray charts and stuff, but we don't have, like, charts on the other hitters. We kind of just watch them swing, and and I, I just pay attention if they're first pitch hitters. So you kind of go back to basics of pitching of you're going to attack the guy, first pitch strike, and let the bet, let the hitter tell you what you're going to throw next. You're kind of on your own for hundred percent on you your know own. how you're going. No, there was a guy Reimer Liriano that I faced with Staten Island, who I faced since we were in A ball together. So I saw his name and I go, well, I know him. I mean, he's got big time juice to right center, right center with, uh, you know, he covers the outside part of the plate really well. But I knew that walking into the into the very first game, going, all right, we're going to jam sinkers, and then if he's changed, which he usually wouldn't, most guys as they get older can't hit the heater in better. Right, just like a lot of older pitchers can't throw harder as right, they get older. Right, you know, so that's where that was my first first stop, first stop, first stop, and I kept trying to get him in, 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 heater away. He'd foul it off. The guy hasn't changed in twelve years. He's no, still the same yeah. way. You no. know what I mean? So that was things like that is where the preparation now, physical preparation is way different as a starter now that I'm thirty three and not a reliever. And as a reliever, it was like try to get your body warm enough to not get sore. And be able to go pitch every single night. That was the coolest thing. 140 games, and you might throw in 85 of them. If you're lucky, you get to throw in 80 of them. And so that's where I – now you throw every fifth or sixth day. You're kind of – I don't want to say mentally checked out, but when the game starts and my day is done, as in when the reliever, it was like, all right, the game started. It's showtime in an hour. Like it's time to get ready to go. Like you're prepping your body for that 9.30, 10 o'clock, you know, blowout almost fight you know fight or flight at 10 o'clock at night as opposed to a starter i'm kind of getting ready at six how much of that in the big leagues did you know if you were going back to back nights or was it well i mean when i was I mean, throwing, when i was throwing the ball well it was anytime we were winning you never i'm saying you never went into like those situations not knowing am i gonna pitch tonight or not like so you kind of had, had an idea like we're gonna go to you again tonight yes and no 
So usually you're available every night until they tell you you're not available, right? You will not pitch tonight. Yeah. And so I had three of those. I don't know how many days I had in a little over two years in the big leagues, all as a reliever. I had three days total um, of not, of not pitching that I wasn't going to pitch that night. Now there was a couple other days. um, We talked about the twins outing I had where I didn't even have the outing went 16 innings and I didn't pitch. That was one of the most mentally draining things I've ever been a part of. Because I thought I was pitching. I'm prepping, I'm prepping. Did you I'm ever prepping. get up in that game? Never. Mentally, I was up since. Were you the, the last guy down there with Bro, the bullpen catchers? Because they were just trying to save me for the next day. They weren't trying to, you know. Yeah. If we use everybody and I was going to go three or four innings, our last long reliever just threw three innings. If I threw three we got, and our starter goes two, we're in big trouble. Yeah. Most relievers, if you throw three in a row, that's the only way you're going to be down. Unless you get a guy like Liam Hendricks, Craig Kimbrell, some big-time closers. They're if there's a safe situation, it could be day four or day five, they want it. Because they know it could be a three day, three or four-day stretch where there's no safe situations. We're winning by 12, hopefully, is what you're hoping for. Right. So that's where you're, the game will dictate when your, your off days are. So you're ready every single day, but it's just a matter of, is the game going to dictate when you were pitching? And if you're the, the farther away from the closer role you are, the bigger spread of runs you have. It's so like mine was usually down two to up five, any time after the fifth to the eighth, I was pitching. If it was closer than that, it was probably the sixth or the seventh. If it was a closer game than down five or up five, down two. Um, but if it was a bigger spread than that, I could throw the ninth inning also. So you can't ch- mentally check out. Let's say our two long guys have already thrown, and now I throw the ninth. I remember two. Yeah, they're not going to burn their guy. Right, 2018. I threw the I threw the ninth twice in Anaheim, and I thought there was no chance I was throwing both times. Right after the eighth inning, they get an out. Hey, Walden, get up. And I'm like, all right. So I ended up throwing back-to-back days on that, not knowing. And I thought our guy before was going to throw. He was out there in two innings through 35 pitches, maybe. And he had up to 70. He was a starter. Why isn't he going out there for the third? So you get caught with your pants down is what we call it, right, where you're just sitting there not paying attention and you're not locked into getting to go, right? It's, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to mentally be ready for that. Uh, get in an, into a round Major League Baseball. Your buddy, your good friends, Angels, tied for first in the AL West. That they are, man. It's been fun to kind of watch them play. But I, I, I talked about them a little I bit. I think we about, did. I think I talked about their bullpen acquisitions being pretty good. They uh, And that's kind of, I think, been the they, surprise for most people. And then Taylor Ward just picked. Taylor Ward's been. That was fun <laughs> to watch. And then bet. watching, having, having – uh, Drew's videos the other day was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that's great. I now, mean, Chad, was, we were all about it. It's been, it. That was pretty cool. It's fun to see guys at that level and having success and, and on fire going back to just some simple stuff that simple stuff you did when you were 13. Oh, my goodness. And No, it's like hitting off the tee for a lot of the younger guys. There, there's still guys that do it. Not everybody does it. It's guys that, that find their routine, but it's, it's what like, like Ward's working on staying inside the ball, and he did it well, both I mean, the two or three at-bats that we saw. But yeah, you don't you don't see a lot of guys driving the ball the other way. Typically, at least on TV, you don't. And we finally oh, yeah. saw a game where it's like this is a good one that people can go back to and 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 use. Are you surprised? <laughs> because I know you you know you still love the, the 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 ball club, but are you surprised at all about how the Red Sox have played? I'm kind of surprised that. Or that they're what is it thirteen back, twelve back? Yeah, what? They're, I know they're under five hundred. They're twelve, kinda, thirteen, and twenty one as of today. They were twelve back. I thought they were going to be kind of around five hundred. Um, they got a couple things that they got to figure. A fifth starter would be a great one. Um, having Hulk only throw three. They're kind of in between between Hulk. Uh, I think his name's Anthony Davis, the lefty that started that opened up for him the other day. Them two and Whitlock. They don't really know. Are they going to be a five inning starter or six inning starter? I think all Whitlock and Hout can be top top notch starters. It's a matter of are they ready for that physically at being 25, 26 years old to go out there and throw 185 innings, 190 innings. That's going to be hard to do. Uh, the other acquisition we saw is a friend of the podcast, Donovan Walton from Seattle, now with the Giants. That's right. Just got traded over, right? Uh, I or, believe did so. He get waived or? I'm not sure. He was in AAA or was with the team. I'm not quite sure. They acquired. A member of uh, the Giants, Seattle did, and I'm trying. It was how they worded it. it. Was it was worded kind of funky. Either way, he got picked up with the Giants. Got his first hit over the weekend in St. Louis. 
Speaking of St. Louis, we saw Albert Pujols take the bump for the first time in his career. I mean, that's now that he's we know it's over. I mean, it's a pretty right. fun moment. One hundred percent. Is that what you're like? Yeah, dude, I loved it. I, I watched it live, and I'm like, man, this blowout. And I went. I was actually working out. Turned the Verlander game on, and I was like, yeah, I'll go back to watching the Giants. And Pujols is on the mound. And he's loving it. He smiled from ear to ear. But you could see even like the double play the ball that he wanted. I mean, he was begging for it, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but that's just obviously those numbers will be with him forever. It's not like it's a real number. It's a, it's a fake kind of funny joke for him to pitch an inning. But he wants that zero, right? I mean, or he's a strikeout. Be, he right? wants we'll, something. We Got to get something out of not it. Not a three run homer. I do like Longo Longori wanting the ball for uh, the sure. first hit off of him. That's I would have never even have thought to have done that. Me neither. I'm surprised, and I don't. Somebody was yelling. You could hear in the video, uh, somebody yelling for the ball. That's whatever. Heads up, move. Heads up, move. Very heads up. But if Longo puts that in his trophy case and has Albert sign that, that's the yeah. way to do it, man. Yeah. That'd be that's a good pretty, one to have. Yeah, that is pretty sick. And then when it's not your year, it's just simply not your year. And I don't think it's the Cincinnati Reds' year. I mean, I've seen this before. I've, I've seen the no no. I've seen it in extras. I've seen a no no like a guy. It might have been it was a, a it was no a, hitter through it, nine, and then in the tenth they blew it. Well, it happened with um, Mark Gardner. Okay, was one story we had. Um, I, and I, I've seen it again, maybe in the last couple of years. Somebody threw a no hitter, or a team threw a combined no hitter and still lost the game. Uh, the Reds throw a combined no hitter and lose one nothing to the Pirates uh, of all teams. That's tough. Uh, that's just not their year. No. It's, but, I mean, what do you, th- in my opinion, what do you think is going to happen? You're not going to have good fortune when you just trade away some of your, your no. franchise players. No. Suarez, Winker, gone. Um, obviously, they've kept Joey Votto, who's supposed to be a great clubhouse guy. I don't know him personally, so I can't speak on it. I've heard nothing but great things. Um, but that's, like, the only guy they've really kept through all of this. you got a stud pitcher in green, young kid. He goes out there and gives up no hits. And, I mean, you don't need the win. But it makes you feel better. I mean, your team winning is better than you getting that win, in my opinion. You want your team to win when you're pitching because it shows that your team shows up for you. More times than not, like my biggest thing is I want my team to play defense when I'm pitching. Right? That's quick. You got to be quick to the, you know, getting the ball, getting going. If your kids, if your defense is flat footed, they're not going to play good defense for you. You know, the the quicker tempo you have in between pitches, the better off they're going to be in between pitches. There's less downtime, they're a little bit more on their toes. But that's where the winning, right? You want your team to play good when you're pitching. Yeah. But just because you yeah. win or lose doesn't necessarily mean if you've done exactly what you should have. Like on that situation, what else was Hunter? What what else was Green going to do there? Give him no hits, and I don't know. I think it was six or seven innings. I don't know exactly. I didn't look at the stat line. I just saw that they combined no hitter. L. It's hard. And if it was anybody else, I don't think the story would have lived as long as it has. But being that it's the Reds and their season's been awful, it's been easier to talk about, especially, you know, with sports and media outlets. And, oh, yeah. And, I mean, I'm not a po- – I, I did it myself. But, uh, yeah, combined no-no for the loss. And then the other thing I saw was the Yankees over the weekend, uh, Tim Anderson and Josh Donaldson. There was a tag play at third that Tim Anderson beat back to the bag. And you saw Donaldson. I don't think he even was an intentional, like – like I, throw off the bag, but he tried to get his knee in there. From what I saw, and it was a baseball play. I think first, yes, you know, and his momentum took him into Anderson and it pushed him off the bag. I like both players, and I I don't think I saw benches clear. Nothing happened of it. It kind of died in the in the moment after the game. You kind of just heard, you know, it was a baseball move. Like yeah. I didn't hear anybody have a problem with it. Ultimately, it's just like when did it become so like everything's bad everything's a big deal everything hurts my feelings everything is if he didn't gotta be if he didn't get injured like tear his acl roll not do something more than roll an ankle it's a baseball where the throw kind of took i mean what is he the not throw kind of took is he not supposed outside, to try right? to put a tag on a guy yeah you got to put a tag on him especially like right it took there. me into him could he have maybe not so heavy into pushing him off i mean the umpire caught it yeah I, and i get time. it's a runner being pissed you're getting pissed because you're getting back to the bag. You thought you had the bag easy, 
And but the, like go go twenty five years ago and play the game. Like these guys would not handle. They couldn't make it. I saw the video of Albert Bell just absolutely just, running that dude over yeah, it and I, fill the ball at second base and just get torched. And that's I mean that's the way the game was played back in the day. It, we can't. You can't. The other thing I was watching is that, and it was the same series. It was uh, Joe Kelly firing. I mean, you everybody knows he throws a sinker, <laughs> a hard heavy. That ball moves a foot. You, you've seen him. Oh yeah, like, it, it's a foot and a half. That ball's moving. It's insane. You know what he throws. Now, if it was a four seamer up at the neck, yeah, then I could see you having an issue with it. But you know what the guy throws, and he threw one that kind of got away. It was maybe like it's pushing it. Calling it chin music, yeah. we're pushing it, but it's the stare down and the piss, and it's like, come on, man. Now, exactly. If there was a a, a previous altercation where you know they they think it's going to happen, like when Arenado got thrown out the other day, and there were seven guys getting hit. <laughs> yes, right. And I'm, but that I one get, wasn't even that close to Arenado, though. I think that was a little overreaction, I've considering the Mets the box. had I've been hit, plunked. I've hit a couple guys. I actually hit a guy in my last outing. O two sinker away. And it ran all the way up and into a righty. Like, I was trying to absolutely get it, and it ran on me. Um, got him right in the form. It was actually a guy that I played with, one of my good friends, Austin Rye. Um, no, I'm not trying to do it. O two, two 2 outs, I'm trying to finish the inning right now. But, like, with Arenado, I understand why. You, right? They've been hitting guys. Guys have been getting hit all over the ballpark for the whole series. It's a little too close to the head for my – I mean, I've never, I got been, you. I've I, never I, been in the box with a, with a ball getting hit, thrown – I've also hit a guy in the head, too, and it's a terrible experience as a pitcher. 2016? 2016 in AAA. Same th- almost the same pitch, 0-2 sinker away, and it, I'm trying to get it, and I just bail out early, and it runs. And not, the guy was good. I Actually, he was a coach with the Red Sox, I'm pretty sure, Nate Spears. Like how, do you, how do you control that much movement? I mean, seriously, how do you control a, a foot of movement? It's not, the, it's not even the control of the movement. You can control it at ninety eight percent. It's all right. I got to get it. Yeah, I got to get it. I mean, you guys have all driven a car. Driving a car at one hundred and twenty, which is the fastest I've personally gone, <laughs> is kind of firm. Yeah, it's firm. driving a car at two hundred. Right, the same car can go two hundred. Is it gonna be as straight and steady and smooth? No. Same thing pitching wise. Right, I could I could throw the ball in the outer third of the plate at ninety eight percent velocity. Pretty good clip. Now, I try to ramp it up just that extra click. I'm uh, not as good. I mean, and that's kind of where guys are at. I mean, but that's where that's why in the big leagues, everybody's throwing 97, 98 miles an hour. They're not throwing at 95%. They're up there giving it everything they got, and that's why they're throwing 12, 15, 20 pitches in an inning, and they're done. You're just smashing, bro. He's killing everything we have. I'm gonna We're going to have to get vacuum. Uber. <laughs> <laughs> to Uber a pizza out here. Well, or something. last time you guys had an Uber, you guys Ubered a pizza. It didn't show up for four hours. Yeah, that was no. So one, we had to do it twice. Two Ubers? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Well, although the last one with the second time was delivery, <laughs> but it, it got here. Yeah, and it just I just was thinking like, why is everything just so blown up now? Like everybody just. But it's the same thing. Like I mean, it's like everything else in life. It's it's what's on social media. It's oh, there was this one play today. That guy's kind of got a little, you know, benches cleared. We always saw the, I mean, when, whenever the bench is cleared, we'd always see it. We'd always be like, oh, what happened? Well, usually it was people getting hit, right? Or because they took it out on the field on their, on their own, right? There wasn't, it was getting benches cleared towards the end of the year, back half of the all-star break when teams have had enough finally. They played 10, 12, 15 games against each other and they. We don't like each other anymore. <laughs> we've seen it. Like to say, like the Dodgers and the Giants have a rivalry, Red Sox, Yankees. Yes, but really, like when that same team together has played the other team 12, 15 times and we've split and they're hard games and we're grinding together, now it's a rivalry. The rivalries are getting a little hot before the season even starts. We're 30 games into this thing. It's like got, and, and the Mets are getting mad because is- everybody's getting hit. Yeah. Something's wrong. You guys are all getting hit in elbow guards, shin guards. There's, I mean, I don't want to get hit. I don't, I'm not saying that getting hit's easy. Something's going on there. Evidently, the scouting report is we got to get heaters in on them, and they're aggressive to heaters in off the chalk. Right? That was my scouting report to pull host, and I hit him. I can't believe I hit him. I hit him, and I was so mad because I literally just hit a Hall of Famer in my – I got 14 days in the big leagues. I'm an idiot. But the, the scouting report is fastball's in. You leave it on the plate, he will get a hit. You, he will chase off in, and that must be what the scouting report is with a lot of the Mets. I don't know. I've only faced the Mets one time, and I didn't have a good day. 
So, but that's where it's just like everything, every circumstance that everything like that is a big deal. And it's blowing up on social media. Exactly. It's just, everything's a big deal. Everything is, it's just made to be bigger than it really is. And it's annoying. And then you got guys like Trevor Bauer, who's whoa throwing out money. Forget the other stuff. Like I, I'm, whatever happens, I don't know. Yeah. I'm. I, we've talked about it a little bit. I'm. I'm not a person to have any decisions based on any of that stuff. So it's whatever. Yeah. But like they're doing the, they're giving the minor league guys or just other guys twenty five hundred bucks to bat flip or pimp home runs or. They, I they, haven't, they seen, call it I doing, haven't seen any of that. Yeah, oh yeah, I know. Right. Doing cool shit. Okay. Right. For twenty five hundred bucks and you know, if you do some cool shit, you make the game interesting. But I have a clip and he he talks about making it better. This year's minor league do cool shit award is Robbie Tenerowitz who hit this home run and oh my god the disrespect on this is absolutely incredible and I am here for it the best part about this is this is the bottom of the third inning in a 2-1 ball game in double a it's a completely meaningless home run and he turned it into a very 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 shareable moment that makes the game more entertaining and better for everyone now as the announcer noticed he crossed the plate and the bird is definitely flying he's done it again the bird is flying. So, Robbie, congrats for doing cool shit and making the game better for everyone. And that's worth $2,500. For all you other minor leaguers out there, if you do cool shit, send it to us. And you could win $2,500, too. Help make the game better for everybody. I'm out. You're out of it? I'm out. I just... First, I want to see a cool play as, like, a guy making a dive and play in the gap. Is right. this, but making the game, homer? like maybe, homer, that's tight. maybe he needs to learn, like the, maybe the words need to be different. Making maybe. the game better. That's not, that's not, I don't consider that making the game better. Now, I don't, listen, I don't, and like, it's not even that, like it's, the play's not better. No. This is single A baseball. I, it, my, my buddy's a pitching coach on the team. <laughs> they, well, good for him. <laughs> yeah. And you know, he showed out and it's like. Dunedin. Yep. The Dunedin Blue Jays. So low, I think it's low. Uh, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, twenty-four strikeouts, nine inning, nine inning, game. and a nine inning game. Oh yeah, better make the game better. Twenty-four. You're set. Three outs were put in play. How many hits did they give up? Two. How many walks? Five. Five free passes. Right. So I mean, there was base runners on. These guys had chances. 24, 24 strikeouts. Punches. That's not good. It's professional baseball. That's a, that's a decent little place to play out there as well. You're saying you're playing in the stadium. They got all the stuff. We could pull up TrackMan from there. They got all their stuff. You could see what they're throwing. I was I was blown away. I was like, I had Chad text me that, and I was like, what is is this indie ball? What is this? <laughs> no, it's affiliated that's baseball. Real- Real Professional baseball. baseball. Right Guys getting paid. Same level as Fresno Grizzlies. Same exact level. 24 strikeouts in a nine inning game. So would you, would would the fans like that? The game's faster. I bet you that game was only two hours and 28 minutes. I mean, it probably was pretty but, quick. But yeah, was it fun? Go watch 24 punch outs. What's good about in that? In two though? hours and 30 minutes. Like what's good about it? Now, I would like it as a pitcher. I'm like, dude, like Adrian Martin showed that. And I was like, that's tight. Right, because he's the pitching coach, and he's like, I'm proud of my boys for going out there competing. For sure. But what's good about that? Yeah, there's nothing. I don't like it. It's not good baseball. It's not good baseball. No. Right, these fans that want to change the game, is that what they want to see? No, they want higher scoring games, but faster games somehow. Doesn't Those two don't have Again, up? I go. I know people are probably tired of us talking or hearing me they talk about it. I don't think they that people are of that mindset. I don't think enough people or that many people are of that mindset. Correct. That we got to change all this stuff. I really don't. Do you think the little 10-second clip that uh, Bauer's trying to get into, what, he, what he's trying to do is trying to get Instagram views. Not Instagram views, but it's, it's all so, clicks. It was to his YouTube channel. Correct. And what, to, like, so I got some guys to how this has all kind of come about. I got some guys that play with Savannah Bananas. Yeah. By the way. That's insane over there. I'm kind of I'm in on it. At it's first, fun. I, all right, so I watched. See, it at here's first the difference. This is a joke. But see, but it's it, it, it is. It is. It's but, the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. Dude. The difference with that is, you know, you know what you're getting. Yes, it is a show. 
right. know what you're getting into when you go to that. Yes. And the way they've produced the game, but it's two hour games. Everything's quick. There, but there's some real ball players on there. Um, I think some of the cooler ones are the pitchers. No, I, yeah, with with that team, you know what you're getting. You know, I think initially people were probably like, "What is this?" You yeah. know, but then you see you both teams get involved in it. Obviously, the fans love it. They They're involved it. in it. They said the kids, like and it looks Clark like it's, the kids loved it. It looks like it's sold out. No, it. It's not like, and they're not like, oh, only in Savannah. No, like they just played in Kansas City, the Monarchs, who my buddy plays for that team. They won the league last year in the American Association, and they, he loved it. He goes, bro, this was so much fun. They were able to play a little bit and, and enjoy it, and dude, my buddy had a blast. He said they had absolute blast with Burnsy out there and, and the boys from the Bananas. Yeah, and I saw that one. That was good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to having fun and stuff. I'm like, you're incentivizing like that guys to, to do stuff that's fun. Over the top, and yet the league sucks. So where I was going with that, the Bananas, their whole thing was, we need a 10-second clip. Can we grab 5 to 10 10-second clips, throw them on Instagram, and let people know how much fun we're having? So that is to what Bauer, I think what Bauer's trying to do. Like, But inside the real game of baseball, I, that's you're, you're now incentivizing kids to do outlandish stuff that isn't part of the game. Right, if you traditionally, bat, yeah, traditionally, right. I'm not against bat flips. I've gotten bat flipped. I actually watched a hitter to see if I know he got it or not. The, it's all about that little 10 second clip. How many how many views and looks can we get and show people that that minor league baseball is exhilarating or exciting? Is I would hope that's what Bauer's trying to do. If he talks about growing the game, if he's just doing it to get the little clickbait or get his what his YouTube like, I want it to be to better and better the game it would be my favorite thing. If he's making money or getting views while doing it, I'm all in on that. I think some of his YouTube stuff, I I was not a Bauer fan until he started getting into a lot of the talking points that he got into. But then I started paying attention a little bit more. Well, he's getting behind the scenes, too. He was letting you into what's going on in, during COVID, right? Correct. What that season was like for, for the players and the things they had to do and all that. So, I mean, it was, it was interesting to see all that. And, uh, you know, the other stuff off the field, it's – Whatever, there's there's people that take care of that stuff. That's not me. It's not, I'm not here to report. I'm not an investigative reporter. Exactly. I don't work for the athletic. We're not doing that. But I just feel like, to, like just to say, like, to it's a good game or to make the game better. It's like, no, the game's – there's a lot of shit going on. It's like, no, the game's not, not better at, at no. times or in certain places or certain things. I don't feel like it's better. I, I don't – it's tough because I've been in the game for – this is my 16th season – and I've seen it kind of change. It really changed. I, I don't know if it was because I made it and I had a full, almost pretty much a full year in the big leagues in 19, but me and my wife, we were like since 2020, it was like the game is different. The reason we play is different. Um, and now that I've kind of stepped away a little bit farther back, I'm playing for me and my family and like literally the love of the game. I'm not playing for, oh, I hope I do this, that, and the other. Right, I feel like I've made the big leagues now. It's just I enjoy still playing. Right, We talked about it a little bit right, last time. Right. There's a reason why I'm still playing right. in the Atlantic League. There's other ways to go play. There's other ways to make some money. But I think that's my best chance to get back to the big leagues because I want to f- – that energy is just – it's completely separate. It's the best in the world. And that's – I mean, you, you go to the games, and that's the difference between – you go to a big league game, and then you go to a playoff game, and the atmosphere is completely different. That's the difference in a minor league game and a big league game as a player, in my opinion. Right, like you still, I still get butterflies in the Atlantic League starting. Like, I like my tummy hurts, and me and my buddy talk about it. Like, oh, my tummy really hurts. Like, I'm going to the bathroom like seven, eight times. <laughs> like, my tummy hurts. I'm about to throw up. Yeah, but that's what me and my buddies talk about. And even in the Atlantic League, I still get nervous. My stomach is turning. I just want to compete, and it's knowing that you're putting everything you've worked for. You're going out there and competing and showing what you've done for for me. It's my whole life. Um. Getting into this section high school, the central section baseball playoff stuff, it's we briefly touched on it towards the end last time. The seedings are set. It is what it is. They took top eight for Division One. Uh, the following, uh, or the guys that didn't qualify D1, they mixed them in D2 with some other teams that came up from D3. You've seen it. I, I, I looked at it a little bit. Um, I really looked at D1, D2, D3 just to kind of see where some of these teams are laying out. Um, if you don't have a good record in your league, you got two options. Find a new league or get better to make the playoffs. 
Those are my two options. If you don't do good in your own league, the track, if you can't compete and go, what do they play? 16 games in the track? 15. 15 games. We got to win. We got to win six. You have to win six. Now, I understand you're playing Buchanan for three, and you might not scratch one of those out. Or, But you got to be able to scratch two out of three against some of these other teams. In my opinion, you don't have to play 500 baseball in your league, but you got to get some wins. Um, and that's just one of the leagues that, obviously, you get some of these leagues that are really good. In my opinion, I think the track's a really good league. But there's some young guys in that league. I, I, I watch more high school baseball this year than I've watched in the last probably 10 years combined just because I was home. I don't know. There, there were some things that I saw that you're seeing these big-time schools go down to D2 and going to go play. Like, Kerman's the number one seed in D2. Would If Kerman played every team in the track once and they went 500, are they in D1? I don't, I don't know. I didn't go watch Kerman. I don't know if they're any good. They could be the worst team ever. I don't know. I got it not happening. Yeah, no, yeah, I, know, I, have, I just haven't seen them. But, like, I watch. To me, Fresno High and Clovis North, that's hard to be in the same, school, like, division bracket. Not, I mean, Fresno High went out there, and I talked to the kids. They had 12 kids on the team. I asked Pappy, bro, where's the rest of the team? Yeah, and it. one of the kids goes, this is <laughs> it. This is all we got. Well, yeah, you guys are grinding. Right, and then there's teams that are in the track that have 40 kids trying out for varsity. They, I mean, and then there's another 40 trying out for the JV and 40 more for the freshmen. Right, so and Pappy can scratch away 12 guys, and he's out there winning ball games. 20 plus. I'll, and I've said it, like, he can't help the league he's in. Like, no. and this goes for, like, any – like, this isn't just, like, what we do in the playoffs here in the central section because there's people that listen to this all over the place. Correct. And so I know, like, in Sacramento, as a good audience there, they have the two-loss elimination. They take their 16, and it's it's a cool deal. I like it. I don't think everybody needs to go. And I've been saying this. I was on uh, Fox Sports with Pap- uh, Nick Papagni on Friday. Mm-hmm. We did some stuff on Twitter Saturday. And I know I'm just repeating myself, but the people that didn't hear that, like – we don't need to take 16 teams. We don't need ev- – not everybody just not, – not everybody makes the playoffs. So when I was at Central, this was 2004, 5, and 6. I graduated in 6. We went to the playoffs every year. I didn't know that you don't go to the playoffs yeah. if you weren't any good. Yeah. But we were good. Yeah, like, I think and, – And what did they do? I mean, you were at Madera. I remember when I time. played, I believe uh, – so I was 01. It was kind of the deal. Like, the top two in league typically were – you're in. Correct. And if you didn't, you were at the mercy of the CIF who made their seedings, which is kind of like how it used to be even in the last couple of years with division placement and, okay. you know, the seedings are what they are. I just feel like if you're three and 12 in league and, you know, and Madera is the example again that I use, they didn't go. They were 10 and 18 overall. Correct. And they said, no, we're not going. The, and the, the main reason was what's our, what is that's not our standard. Our standard is better than ten and eighteen, right? And so this is my thing. Like so, Underwood's got some young players out there. Yes, right, young dudes. He's got freshmen and sophomores. Are those freshmen and sophomores? Let's say they get a. We'll give them a, a even a sixteen seed in the D two. Right, the last seed in D two. They got to go play Kerman first game. Right, they're going to go and experience how good Kerman is, and you're going to see like what is a, a number one seed in D two, or do you give them more fight and more grit and more like, hey, we need to go to the playoffs next year if you don't, you don't send them because you, you, you didn't think that you are going to compete well enough in the playoffs and you didn't compete well enough in the year. Um, we were talking a little bit and like if that team that's 10 and 18, if they win the last three in, the, in a row and they go 12 and, 15, 12 and 16, maybe they do go. Right, if they show that they're hot at the back end of the you know the last week of the season, and you give them and a little taste of the playoff. But now, is that freshman or sophomore or the what? I don't. I, there's not a right a right or wrong answer in my opinion. But it's what gives them more determination for next year to go to the playoffs and win a ball game in the playoffs. Is it going to the playoffs and seeing the number one team seed and kind of get, probably getting beat on eight one eight two? Hopefully, you don't give up twenty four strikeouts like the Dunedin team yeah. or. Do you not send them and say, hey, you guys go watch them. Go watch what, where we should have been, and let me know how your heart feels sitting oh, I on would, the sideline. I would buy all their tickets to the section title game and go watch a team celebrate. The high school should buy them, right? The, the, you know, any- go, go, go watch another team celebrate what, the, what started in August when school came back. Because yeah. it doesn't start in January, right? No. It's, it starts 
way back. Like way it, before that. There's your the Madeira's it's starting already. Correct. Underwood's thinking about it. It's starting now. He's how how are we going to get ready to get to the playoffs next year? And those any it doesn't it didn't even need to be division 1. No. Go go watch the division 2 section title game and go watch a team celebrate. I've watched it plenty of times. I can tell you right now. And and to the kids my like playoff start tomorrow and this will be Correct. out yep. Tuesday so today. For 20 years I chased a ring. One of that valley title. Um and Finally, that team went and did something super special last year, and we got it. And I got that ring. I've worn that ring four times. Yeah. And I've watched our team get the final out and go ballistic on that mound. The video of that, 150 times. Because that feeling, that gives me the chills literally right now because I've been in a celebration. And my, I mean, my biggest celebration that I was at was in Venezuela when we won the league, and that was unreal. And being a part of that celebration, like I never won anything in high school, right? Winning a tournament when you're 11, 12, 13, it doesn't do anything for you, right? There's no like, hey, good job, boys. But now, um, but now when they when they go and like you win a real tournament or a high school section championship, that's a real championship, man. That's you've worked as a if it's your senior year, you've literally worked four years for it. And for some of you guys, it's that's the end of the road, like. This will be the last time you put on cleats. And it, it'll probably be the last time that that ball club plays together as a, as a team. Some of them, they don't know it. They might want to go play. right? We had guys, that, some of the best hitters that I've seen, go to a college and just not make it. After, the, after Christmas, they're, we've had, I've had enough. Either family life, what, there's so many reasons why you get out of the game of baseball. Um, we had this conversation the other day when I was leaving, and I said, one thing I asked you, do you regret – not playing after high school and or I go do you did you ever think about not playing after high school and he's like man I regret not playing and I said that's the worst word I've ever heard I want no part of yeah, that word it's it, it's it's hard because and I tell I, I told the players this uh, all the years I was around I'm like listen I'm 35 36 yeah, 37 older last year it was 39 I said listen I can't go back and do it again like no. if, if you have any desire to continue to play you need to go play Right, and the point of of I've worn that ring four times, and I've watched that. It's not the object. If you're out there chasing that, you're never going to be satisfied. No, it's just like I see all these dudes talking about respect, going out and getting respect and getting. Listen, nobody gives a fuck about. I don't care if you respect. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't. Correct. If you're out there chasing people's respect, you are going to get tired because you're not. It's just not going to happen. The people that you respect more times than not. Just do shit the right way. You're, people will respect you. 100%. Don't wake up every day like, what can I do to earn Marcus's respect I've, today? I've never looked at it like, man, I got to go do this for somebody else. There's just there's always going to be somebody that doesn't for whatever reason. Correct. For no reason. Yeah. And there, there's guys that are going to like you, not like you, hate the way you go about things. It does, And that's their problem. That's not my problem. I'm not going to go chase them down because I need their respect. Man, I wish I had the quote. It's something like the the haters are the ones that are always doing less than you. There's not many guys that are out there doing more than you that are hating on you. That just doesn't happen. Go about your daily work. What you do when nobody's watching will be who you are inside and out. So that could be, you know, putting in the time in the gym. It could be doing running. It could be running camps, helping kids. We talk about like helping kids that are out at Fresno City. That's just who you are as a person to go out there and do it. You don't have to go and help them. You don't have to do a whole lot of things. But the more people see it, that's how people respect you, in my opinion, in the baseball world at least. It could be different in the workforce. I don't really – I haven't been outside of the baseball world personally. With everybody going, like, like what are we doing? People talk about society and how the, this, the culture and the climate we live in, like, things are not earned anymore. Correct. This is something as, as far as – and I know it's high school baseball. It's not like it's a – a monster job or something like that, but but this is what where does this it guy's where does it start? Life. Yeah, where do you learn the mentality? Like at some point, you gotta they gotta know what failing is. Correct, and that's one thing. Like I don't like winning as much as I hate losing. I hate watching other people celebrate. Like even the high fives across the mound, like high fiving your own teammates, like that's cool. Watching the other team do it, that really pisses me off. 
especially if I had something to do with the game. But I think that's a mentality. That's an attribute. And when you get handed something for losing, you didn't lose. You didn't learn. It's hard to learn from losing if you didn't see somebody else get that reward. Right? That's like, I mean, my kids, if one of my, if my daughter does something good or does something bad, I don't reward both of them or discipline both of them. This isn't, I mean, now as a team, a collective baseball unit, yes and no. But as a, as an individual and as people that are getting rewards for things that they didn't do, that's kind of where society, in my opinion, has issues, especially more of it in the baseball community. Because I'm watching bad baseball players get trophies and then they think they're really good. And then they, when they're juniors and seniors in high school, they want to go, how come St. Mar- Mary's or, or Long Beach State isn't looking at me? You're not very good. I know that I know they've handed you stuff all year. like I don't care. Right? It doesn't matter what people say. If you're good, there's gonna be multiple people looking for you. I wasn't very good my senior year, evidently. I had one college offer. And people maybe maybe know the difference between really good and a an average decent player there's some average there's a lot of average but what's good wrong ball players. at the end of the day what's wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that most but, people are but right that's the work ethic that's where there is something that separates an average player from a really good player 100 percent. i mean talent obviously is in there but and at the high school level a lot of it is talent are you the most talented <laughs> don't be don't be honest not even close not even close but how many guys do you think could would outwork you what, or, 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 or what work ethic did it, what work ethic work ethic did it take for you to get where was, you've gotten to be in the big leagues? We, I mean, there's a couple of shows that you've done, but it's the day that I worked out with Matt Garza, 2009, 2010. I'm rehabbing Tommy John. Garza's in the pros. We got Chad with us. We got a couple guys. Sean's on his way. I'm on my way. That was when we figured it out. I think all of us. It's when you you saw the example you needed to see. That was a 5 a.m. swim session, right? And that's when, that was when I really looked at the work ethic and go, bro, there's a lot to do here. Like this guy's, we didn't even throw a baseball. I don't even know how many, I, I might've thrown a baseball with Matt four or five times. It was the work outside. It was, it was the workouts, the work outside, the swimming, all of that stuff is what, what he showed me. I'm talking, if there's 20 minutes for you to give, it's something towards baseball. It's something to get you better if it's an ab workout, if it's a mental philosophy thought process. Whatever that is, you have to be that dedicated to even get there. All the extra time that I have, it goes into preparation, getting into if it could be the next season, the next outing, whatever that is for the next start. Um, That's kind of where my time goes, and that's where you're able to stay and live long into this game is putting time back into the game, the dedication into it. There's not a whole lot of guys that, that dedicate a lot with a good foundation of, of talent to start with and don't last pretty long in this game. That doesn't mean they're going to make it to the big leagues. I didn't think I was going to make it to the big leagues, especially in 2015, 16. But, I, I mean, you, that perseverance to keep going, whatever. I, I, you got to get lucky. I got lucky. But it wasn't just, oh, I'm just going to wait for the luck to hit. No, you got to prepare yourself and get ready. And so that, that's, that, start, that goes with all of those freshmen that didn't make playoffs. It starts today. Right. Right. It starts with going to the game tonight, going to go watch somebody go play. Is that it could be Kerman as a number one seed. It could be uh, Edison, who's a 16 seed somewhere or Manechi. Right. It it doesn't matter who you're going to go see. Go see a team that you haven't played. You haven't seen play or you didn't play against. Not turning it off. You you seem to have a problem turning it off. I don't I don't sleep much. (laughs) And that might be part of it. Oh, that's good, dude. I know uh, he kind of stole the show from us today. He did. But he's a good boy. He wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Not bad for coming out of swimming lessons. And nah, man. Been a long day for him. No, you go spend time with, with uh, babies and mom, and I appreciate you even just giving me whatever you got, dude. And No problem. We'll brother. zoom it up while you're gone, yeah. too, and, and when you get back, we'll, we'll, we'll get back into some more stuff. And uh, uh, back to the Atlantic League, dude. Back to the Atlantic League stay, tomorrow and stay start healthy. On Wednesday. Yeah, stay healthy, man. Keep us posted. I'll we'll definitely zoom while you're there. Got to get us, send me some video too of some of the stuff while you I'll guys. I'll send are you out. the link. There's a link and the videos aren't very good, yeah. but our our radio guy's okay. Um, I talked to him a little bit the other day. I finally listened to him. Whatever that was, Sunday, and he was okay. Um, so 
the boys are grinding right now. We were supposed to have an off day today. 10 a.m. game to a 10-hour bus ride home. Beautiful. Gotta love it. <laughs> well, dude, be travel safe. Congrats on the new addition to the family. Thank you, thank you. I always appreciate it. And uh, that's Marcus Walden, everybody. Here at I Podcast. <laughs>